Good afternoon, Joshua. I know it is 2 p.m. for you, so I'm wondering, how has your day been? It's been brilliant. Thank you very much. Very busy at the minute. Um, been talking to some clients today about moving some more items. As you know, I'm into the flipping course and uh, on the real world. So what I do all day is flipping and basically finding items. So it's been a very busy day for me today, but very beautiful day. The sun's out here, so we can't complain. Good, good. So for context, you are the first person from the flipping course that I'm interviewing. So excited to see where this interview goes. I'd like to start with how did you begin flipping? How did you get into it? To start off, it wasn't something that I actually considered doing at all. Um, when I first joined the real world, I was looking at copywriting and obviously the freelancing course. When I actually did first join the real world, it was Discord still. It wasn't the real world app as we see it now. Um, so it kind of fell into, as I was learning copywriting, I realized how out of depth I was for something of this caliber. And I was seeing a lot of Dylan Madden's YouTubes online. And with his YouTubes, I kind of started to follow and listen to what he was saying. And it led me to the flipping course, the first 100 course, which originally was a, a brokey course. I think it started out as the brokey course and uh, sounded just up my alley at this point. So I kind of jumped onto that and it was so simple. It was the, the simplicity of the course itself was you find items free or cheap and my mind exploded. It's like, why have I never thought of something so simple? Facebook, I'm on it every day, constantly using social media. So it was just a matter of starting to utilize that to make money rather than waste my time looking for validation or looking for random jobs. Okay. Could you explain a bit more about what the course teaches you? Of course. Um, so at first, it, it basically teaches you to believe in yourself, knowing that you can make the first 100, you can continue to make another 100 after that continuously. It's just a, a matter of repetition at this point. And once you make that first 100, it really does prove to yourself the belief that you need to continue on and just have the strength to continue, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, the first 100 itself will teach you how to take items from online and resell them for either profit or trade them for something of equal value to eventually gain some kind of monetary profit. Mm -hmm. And how does that scale? Scale as in? How do you make more than 100 as in? So how would you scale going up? So obviously, as you in time, if you were looking at first for free items that could be up to five pound or even free in some cases in your local areas, utilizing Facebook groups, you can find these items, put them online for, you know, a little bit more. And as you find up to perhaps five items a day, you can sell them for five to 10 pound, which will eventually give you the money that you need to keep continue buying items. Um, for instance, some of the students within the real world and have started selling consoles and they're finding them for 60 pound and they're selling them for 120 pound, which is doubling their money. It's an incredible jump to be able to double your money like that in such a quick instance. And the great thing about flipping is that it, for, for an example, I woke up the other day, uh, within 10 minutes, I woke up, jumped on Facebook, sent a bunch of watches to my clients because that's where I'm at at the minute. I'm selling watches. And they, one of them instantly returned back. I managed to get a win of £210, which is half my rent at the end of the day. So this is going back into my business so I can repeat the process and continue scaling higher and higher. Right. So I'd like a bit more about your journey. The, what did you start off flipping in terms of what scale and then what has that gone to now you're saying watches and are there other things as well of higher yes. ticket let's well, call it that one at this point there are there aren't anything higher than there isn't anything higher than watches I, i'm currently just settling at watches just to get a flow for it there's a lot to learn about watches including how they go together how they work i have taken not only just selling watches but repairing the watches that i'm selling to customers as well or their own watches. I haven't had to repair any yet, thankfully, but they do send me watches that they've previously bought from other places that I repair for them and send back to them. 
So I started with copper coins, funnily enough. I had a collection of small copper coins ranging from an ounce to a half ounce of weight each. And I just started selling the copper essentially for five pound here and there. That was my free profit, my 100% profit line where but that really made a massive difference. And from there, I switched from copper to ounces of silver, which are only around 18 pounds if you buy them at weight, 18 pounds GBP, Great British Pounds. Um, so while I was selling silver, I started to rise up to jewelry. Um, beforehand, before joining the real world, I actually had a small jewelry business on TikTok uh, that essentially failed due to being uh, deleted. I think they're too much different randomized content against TikTok's own agenda. But the real the realization was that I could get a business, but I just couldn't get it to work. Um, with the flipping course, it's actually helped me sustain a business, not only through listening to how people in the chat work and learning from either their mistakes or from things and ideas that they come up with, but also from listening to the captain's lessons within the freelance section itself. Um, once I got to silver, I kind of started just repeating that process over and over again. Silver bar here, silver bar there, Omicron, Valcambi. It, it just went on and on and on. And eventually, I, I think I found a motorbike. It, I think it was a motorbike. It was a black um, DB bikes or whatever. It was called direct bikes motorbike. It was a really bad one. But I managed to flip it uh, for about 600 pounds which was essentially my first month's rent. And that was what got me going. Once my rent was paid and my bills had started, to, I'd started to catch up on my bills, this was the, the idea that I realized I could actually do it. This was the belief that they were talking about in all the, in all the, the courses and the lessons that you've got to believe in yourself. Once you do it once, you can do it again and again. Because it's, it's simple to sell a bar of silver, but when you start making a constant flow of money, uh, every week it's it's amazing because you start to realize that it was it was within you the whole time mm -hmm. <clears throat> very um, interesting once i um went from silver i kind of stretched out from jewelry because i didn't want to get stuck on a, the niche of jewelry i'm not a jewelry type of person i mean i wear two here these are my my daughters around my neck they're, they're, they're necklaces for when they're older um I went to watches. What happened was I was watching a lot of content. And this was uh, before Dylan started really pushing on, you shouldn't be scrolling and wasting your time. You should be getting on with work. And now he has these videos out and it's lovely because it reminds me of it constantly not to keep scrolling and wasting my time when we were awake, we were at work. But it was the videos on TikTok about selling watches it was in the diamond district in new york city and I, I started following these guys and listening to their haggling techniques and these haggling techniques have been absolutely divine for selling watches here in the uk and pushing onto shopkeepers for the idea to sell their items for them for a small profit of keeping the profit in a small commission and this is basically where i'm at at the minute so i've gone from copper coins to silver bars to random items plungers motorbikes you name it and now i'm stuck at a, a point where i'm happy to be selling watches to clients who are buying watches from me every month which is a relief quite frankly it's shown that i've actually gone in the right direction to some case All right so a few questions there <clears throat> first one being to scale this even further i think i saw as part of the course dylan wants you to get you to real estate flipping is that correct like from basically nothing to house flipping or did i misunderstand that there there might be a, a section in the course where he explains that you can go from one to another which i honestly in real estate depending on where you're going to which probably be a, an, a absolutely amazing idea to get into especially if you have the money to put into real estate itself um i'm not on to that section yet though as in i've i've gone through all of the lessons but as far as i'm aware i wouldn't go into real estate myself as of yet, especially mm -hmm. after watching the, the dealings that my landlord, I've recently had a huge flood in my flat that we've had to fix um, and not my flat and the front of the house that I live in here. And um, so after seeing all of the damages and dealings that they've had to deal with, I probably stay well away from the state at this point for myself anyway, personally. Sure. So for you to scale this beyond, let's say watches, are there any plans to do that? Or do you plan on for now sticking the, around the, that area? That's fully, yeah. So basically the, the plan to scale the business right now, I have a small team developing a 
site in the background on a website and we're trying to make it so that we can start selling at this point it's cheap watches uh anywhere from three to four hundred below and once we start establishing this is where we're going to send my clients now to start buying their watches they'll be able to go instead of me going to their inboxes dming them every day sending them a series of watches now i can just automate a message out with a few extra pictures every day with the link to the website where they can go and view them themselves and this should hopefully start generating the money without me having to outreach as much and, th and then I can concentrate personally on each customer rather than worrying about how many and what I'm sending to each customer. Okay. This will be a bit, it's a bit more fluid. Um, and that's how I'm trying to scale this business. So eventually, once we start making money from that and it starts coming in, which we have already, we've proven it works. We just need to kind of perfect the, um, the method, as it were. Mm -hmm. Once we've started doing this, we can scale from cheap watches to more expensive watches. So, for instance, we go from if we were to sell replica watches that for people who like replicas or even low class tag hewers, and then we move up Longines, Rolex, mm -hmm. who knows, one day maybe even Jacob and Co. Cool. I like that. So are you comfortable re revealing how much you've made from flipping or if maybe just the past month, like depends how you want to frame it. I mean, in the last week I've made 420 pound. That's just from the last week. And that's probably the quickest I've made that amount of money other than selling items for a large specific amount. <coughs> okay so what do you roughly average per month in terms of income from at this home? at this point it's about 1.5 to 2 it's it's mm -hmm. it's going up and down so i hit 1.5 um last month and i've hit 1.8 sorry 1.5 the month before and i hit 1.8 this month yeah, and, and that's the month before that i hit 2.4 so it, it is really averaging up and down it all depends on how many and what my clients are up to for instance mm -hmm. this month it was a bit different um a lot of my clients uh were ill it's been really weird a lot of my clients were ill they didn't want to do anything but this month completely change of heart everyone's coming to me everyone wants a watch i think the more i'm building the social proof as well the more i sell watches obviously they 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 see that and they right. continue to come back makes sense so how has the community within the real world affected you has it had any kind of impact absolutely um i could not agree with the principles of the real world more uh, genuinely it's to, it's changing lives there's there's a, an aspect of of life that we take into consideration here and it's that people say a lot of bad things about the real world they they say a lot of bad things about i mean when i first heard of andrew it was an insane feeling because obviously i didn't really like the way he portrayed himself and this was i think these were videos from a, a long time ago that were being brought out to light and as it came on um it was the stories about the brotherhood within the chats and how tate's mind flipped onto being more of a guide to to the students themselves and that's what brought me into the real world and as i traverse the real world i noticed in the chats themselves that everyone just wants you to win there that is all it is there is no one who is going to put you down no one who's telling you you're not going to win there they may give you a a cryptic answer that you have to work out but that's half of the fun that's half of the journey of the real world is is your own hero's journey about making it personal making it for you being the best that you can be and seeing everyone around you in the chats wanting to be successful wanting to win wanting to be busy 100 percent during the day is it's inspiring to say the least mm -hmm. so the quote you used earlier of when we're awake we're working what would you say to people who might call that excessive working so much um i mean when when we look at it in a biological sense we are always working at the end of the day, our amygdala picks up the negative energy from around us to keep us safe so that we can adapt. Uh, we pick this negative energy up and we use it to keep ourselves alive at the end of the day. And it's our jobs to 
put the positivity in our lives. I think working is a positive thing. I think we are naturally supposed to work. We're, we, we're not meant to idly sit by and look at a little screen. I mean, once upon a time, we may have sat on our backs and looked at the stars for a few hours, to, but we were probably studying them. So there's still work involved. So no matter what we're doing, no matter how we are, no matter where we are, when we are awake, as Professor Arno has said in his courses, in his SSS courses, it's the we are awake we are at work at the end of the day we we it's a matter of just working as hard as you can to be the best you can be you're not going to get anywhere by not working if you i think it's something that tate really pushed on me uh he said is that people who hesitate from feeling inferior will be outperformed by those who feel who who make mistakes to be superior and that's always constantly rolling around in my head along with some of the courses the courses are very very good for that because the mindset that they're using and they're trying to teach you on the courses and in the chats themselves really pushes you to just want to be successful and the repetition from it is just going to make you a better person in in our on our right. so in terms of your personal experience throughout being in the real world how different has your life changed how is your average day now compared to before you joined the real world before I joined the real world, everything was a lot more stressful and I didn't understand why. I, did, I genuinely didn't understand why I was stressing about all these little things, what I couldn't do, where I couldn't go, what I, why I can't do this. And once I joined the real world, I started in the real world campus and then gradually pushed into the freelancing campus. But when I, when I was there, I listened to, I think it was Professor Arno's original course and the way he explains how you've got to take on the situation if you have an issue write down the issue you're having and give yourself 10 answers nine times out of 10 the answer itself is going to be one of those answers you've given yourself so i genuinely think once i got into the real world my mindset changed my mindset changed 100 percent uh for the better it, I could never wanted to succeed so much in my life. I never wanted to be better. Um, I can't, hold on, sorry. Oh, sure, I'm trying sure. to think about how I'm going to answer this to yeah. you. It's an, it's an awkward question because perhaps, I don't know if you would want to use this, but when I, when I first started, I genuinely did not like Andrew. I genuinely did not. It was what he said, though, that kept me going. It's, it's a, it was a matter of not liking him, and wanting to be better than him because seeing what he said was you should be pissed off that i'm i'm better than you that was i think that was something along the lines of in his video and i sat there and i said damn straight i'm pissed off i shouldn't be he's he's raising my adrenaline but that's what i realize now is what made me want to succeed now it was andrew all along it was his words that he used the way he portrayed his wording physically brought the anger out in me that made me work harder, made me work towards myself. I, and I, I would thank him for that if I ever got the chance. I genuinely would. Interesting. So an opposite effect to others. Uh, that's, again, like a new perspective. So interesting to hear that you joined. Okay, so in terms of that, why did you still join, though, if you hated him? Like, what was the mindset there? And what made you, like, pull that trigger to actually join the reward? So, as Tate's demeanor slowly changed from, I'm the, well, it's never, it's always, he's always going to be the top G, but when it changed from the younger kind of audio, uh, videos that I was seeing of him, from the, obviously, the very online persona that he's put on, to his very guardian like almost martyr like how would i say this as tate's demeanor changed on the internet as i as i believe in in this case it was just a matter of a lot of people sharing his content out everywhere all over the place because he was one of the most searched men on the internet at one point it was the demeanor, the change of demeanor that got me, it was how he, I slowly started to see and listen to what he was actually saying, rather listening to the stories that people were portraying about him. It was actually listening to what he was saying. And a lot of it made sense. 
it was in fact the video there were two of the two videos that got me to join the real world it was the one where he was speaking about him it was tristan and his brother uh, tristan and andrew talking about chicken about kfc and knowing that i'd been through harder events than that and knowing that they had gotten to where they were from where they were made me want to push harder made me want to obviously the hate at that point was like how is this guy doing so well with this kind of attitude that was the attitude that was the way i had it but that's what pushed me and then one day he actually caught me off guard because he said i should be pissing you off and i said he basically read my mind while i'm sitting at home being pissed off and that's what made, that's what turned me around i said this guy's making so much sense he just woke me up so when I joined the real world, it was because of the video where you see him walking, I think, at the front of one of his homes, and he's talking about what the government's doing or what everyone's doing. I think it was about a two, three minute video. And that's what really got me hooked. It was the, the truth of it all. The fact that he was being honest with me. I know what the deal is in the world. A lot of people understand the deal of how the world works, the way the, way the matrix works. And it just, I just wanted to change. I wanted to change. And at this point, I only had about £75 left. I literally spent my, one of my last bit of money on the real world and just prayed. That was basically where I was at. At this point, I, I, I had no religion either. I was, I've actually converted recently to Islam. So I basically was praying to planets at that point, praying for a, something to happen. And it did. They sent me, they sent me Dylan Madden, of all people. And he essentially told me to stop wasting my time and follow the simple steps, follow the freelancing course and campus and the first 100. And once he realized I was on to flipping, he just told me, just flip, 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 keep doing this. Told me where to go, directed me to the right cases, the right videos. And from there, the mindset just built. And it was a set of combination of what Dylan has said from his YouTube videos and from within the real world itself. And what Andrew has said and done and changed since not only that, his story as well, inspiring and should be inspiring to everyone around knowing what he's gone through recently. Mm -hmm. That's what's kept me in the real world. That's what's wanted me to push on further and help. This cause is greater than myself at the end of the day. It's greater than me, you, Andrew. It's the fight for our children's minds of success for the future, because at the end of the day, it's not about the money or monetary values that we are gaining here. It's about the lessons that are going to be taught and shared on with not only our children, but their children's children. And that's what I feel strongly about here. And I think that's what caught me uh, is, is the way that he showed duty to his followers. And that's something that I can stand behind is, is duty and honor. Very beautifully put. Almost left me speechless there. Um, yeah. Okay. In terms of following, I got following up on that. I don't have anything to add. As I said, very well put. So I'll move on to what was the biggest challenge you faced when you first started out in the freelancing campus, or is that something you've pretty much said already? No, uh, honestly, it was the matter of the biggest face. The biggest challenges I faced were for one believing that I could, that once you get over the belief that you need to, that you can, it, it, it becomes a lot more simpler because you know that once your belief is a doubt at the end of the day, you believe or doubt in something, whether it exists through lack of evidence or no evidence whatsoever. So once you know you can do it, belief is not even an option anymore because it's now not even a doubt in your mind. You've understood the process and that you can just repeat the process is the second step that's the trust okay trusting the method that you can repeat the process and continue to make money i mean if you could make a hundred pound from the flipping course in three days time and then repeat that a thousand times you're going to be pretty well off by the end of the year i really do think so and this is this is what the flipping course gives it gives the ability by the end like in the last three days i've made 320 pound that just goes to show the complete sheer that that just goes to show the complete utilization of the app itself can really work for a lucrative way in a lucrative right. way right. apologies okay yeah agreed and that again is if you don't know what other skill you want to learn then it's so easy to just get started with the hundred dollar flipping course then as you go through that, maybe you'll get an idea to do something else as well, or maybe you'll want to scale that like you're doing. So a lot of options for sure. Absolutely.
And what would you say have been the three biggest lessons you've learned from your time within the real world? So the three biggest lessons that I've learned within the real world. Um, the main one falling back onto belief. Belief is definitely a must. You, if Once you believe in yourself, you'll go forward no matter what you do because there is nothing stopping you from there's no doubt. There's nothing. There's no self doubt in your own ability. Repetition is definitely one of the second lessons that I learned. Repeating all of the lessons and the methods themselves. What was the, what the hardest thing I found? One of the well, sorry, one of the hardest things that I found was getting over the mindset that I already had. Now I had quite a strong mindset for wanting to succeed, but it was the ideology of repeating myself over and over again that I just didn't pick up on. So once I started to repeat the process, consistency, which was the key thing here, consistency of repetition every day, daily, it starts to change your mindset to the people who have put the, the course together. And these courses have been set up by people who are making money on a daily basis, on monthly basis, retainers who are doing very well with their businesses, their brands, the captains themselves who have put forth their mindset lessons within the, uh, the freelancing campus. It, it just all goes together so well and it's so simply put together that it's it's just a very simple process so belief repetition and consistency were the three biggest things that i've learned so far within the real world because without those three things it, it kind of all falls apart if you don't consistently repeat the courses and believe in yourself then oh. you're going to you're going to fail <laughs> good 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 so now that you're on this trajectory, where do you see your life heading in, let's say, six months to one year? I know briefly you talked about scaling, how you're going to scale the business, and is there anything more to add to that? I've I've got a few plans in the works. I'm planning on going on a, uh, to a few places just to see if I can get my bearings for otherworldly works and how the world works a little bit more. I, I had my eyes set on New York City for a little bit. Just to, There's an area in New York City that's very well known for watches, the Diamond District. I just definitely wanted to get my bearings because flipping there would be a very simple process once you have the money to do so. So getting there, going there, having watches from a specific area like that would be very easy to flip in a place like this because they're they're rare so it, it's essentially just trying to scale up to the point where i'm going to have the watches that are going to make me money because at this point it's very cheap watches to people who can only afford cheap watches who only want cheap watches so once i start scaling for higher customer higher higher level customers um higher paying customers looking for better and nicer watches in genuine genuinely then it's going to be a bit more helpful for me to go so uh, it's still early days, to be honest, in the watch business. I'm still completely right at the beginning. If anything, I'm still building the foundation that I'm going to stand on to feel a bit of to feel the success. If you can understand that, it's uh yes, I'm making a certain amount of money a month, but it's to the point where I'm just building, so I can slowly take that step up onto my foundation and feel that I've got somewhere to be. Right, 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 right. So. I am interested to see your progress in the next few months, I say maybe three months. If things by then do scale for you quite nicely, then we'll get you on for a follow-up interview. I'd look forward to That'd that. That'd be awesome. And Absolutely. For my final question, for people who are on the fence about joining the real world, they're still unsure if for $50 it might be a scam, what advice would you have to them? Honestly, it is such a big jump. Um, I can I can fully understand uh, how they feel. The, what I what I have to say to people who are still on the fence that believe that this still may be a scam. Why would you spend fifty pound a month to? I paid fifty pound off within a week of being here in the real world. I'll, I'll point that out just for starters. If someone like me can get to this stage where I'm speaking to the interviewer of the real world, along with so many other successful people that have been interviewed before me, if someone like me, who has been deleted 80 times by TikTok, uh, has just come to the last seven years made content, gone nowhere, very, very little, a brokey essentially in a nutshell or a wagey, I think, as, as um, they used to call us on the videos. If I can do it, 
you can do it. That's that's the fact here. It's I am li- I am physically living proof. If you if I I don't like to blow my own horn like that, but I am physically living proof that it is possible to join the real world and make money. If you are on the fence about joining the real world, you need to believe in yourself because you're not trusting yourself and your own instincts at this point. You're letting someone else tell you what to believe. And like I said before, belief is a doubt in whether something exists through lack of evidence or no evidence whatsoever. So if you're on the fence, go get that evidence. It's right here in front of you. A very good point. Love that. So for people who want to find out more about you or contact you, what can they do so? You can find me on my twitter it's joshua the march hair lamb and that's that's where you can catch me at, at all points from my twitter you can catch my newsletter and everything else from on there got it so i'll add that to the description of the video and joshua thank you for your time look forward to that follow-up thank you so much i really appreciate this very much so i'm sorry for such an awkward interview i can only imagine they go a lot smoother for that some people it's fir- first kind of interview like okay. this as well so i really appreciate you thank you